Hi, this is Keith Townsend of VirtualizedGeek.com again with another introductory video. This time we'll be talking about virtualization. So there's two types of virtualization that we'll be talking about today. One is terminal services based virtualization, which is pretty mature. And the other one is hypervisor based virtualization, which most of our cloud type services are now built on today. Terminal services takes advantage of a single OS instance and allows multiple users to have a dedicated environment within a single OS context. Examples of uh, terminal services products include Citrix and Windows terminal services. Again, examples of terminal services are Windows terminal services. Uh, this comes with most versions of Windows built in allows multiple users to have dedicated desktop instances. You can think of it as dedicated profiles. If you're from the Unix, Linux world, this is nothing new for, for you. Unix and Linux by default are multi-user context operating systems. So you have a single kernel, single operating system, and every user has a dedicated user environment for that operating system. Citrix Zen app is a Windows based product that allows to you to take this ideal one step further and specifically deploy applications. So uh, the examples and the use case that we have in this slide allows for the presentation of desktops. Uh, Citrix actually has an app called Zen desktop that specifically goes to deploying desktops. Uh, utilizes it utilizes the Citrix proprietary protocol called ICA, which is extremely efficient and uh, requires very low bandwidth. And it's important to note that Citrix Zen app is built on Windows terminal services. So you need Windows terminal services or Windows terminal services licenses to actually use Zen app as a standalone application. So some of the advantages of terminal services based virtualization. It's an extremely mature technology. Uh, Citrix actually originated the technology back into Windows 3.5 NT days. Uh, Microsoft actually bought that technology and integrated it into subsequent versions of Windows. Uh, Windows NT 4.0 had a terminal services version. And then after 2000 and later versions of Windows Server, uh, terminal services came as a core part of the operating system that could just be added as a role. Since it's been out for an extremely long time, there's extremely wide client support. Uh, you can get thin clients that will, that will run terminal service sessions, as well as PDAs, smartphones, uh, all kinds of uh, basically dumb devices have clients for terminal services. Relatively simple implementation, again, is very mature uh, for Windows. The most basic parts of terminal services you can enable for uh, versions of Windows 2003 to 2008 with very little trouble. Some of the disadvantages. Compared to other types of virtualization, terminal services is not as scalable. There's also one of the reasons why it's not as scalable is because it uses a shared memory space. So for every uh, instance of your OS, just because we have different user contexts doesn't mean that we have different uh, memory pools. So if you have applications that uh, need their own set of, uh, or their own memory context or own memory containers or conflict with DLLs or whatever the operating system conflicts are, Terminal services has that disadvantage that you have still that shared memory pool and that shared OS kernel. So that brings us to the other type of virtualization we'll talk about in this slide deck, which is x86 based virtualization. The hypervisor, this is where we introduce the concept of the hypervisor, which, which adds a virtualization layer between the hardware and the operating system. This picture from VMware's website gives us an example of how 
VMware approaches x86 virtualization, the bottom half of our picture, we have the CPU, memory, NIC, and disk. We have these physical components. And when we put our hypervisor on top of those physical components, when we install a hypervisor on that physical hardware, we can now create separate logical containers of CPU, memory, NIC, and disk. And then that could be presented to a operating system, which then we can install applications on. So that problem of shared memory space, shared single kernel for our guest operating system goes away with x86 virtualization. I did want to take a few seconds to point out that there is a few different types of x86 virtualization. There's full virtualization, para virtualization, and hardware assisted virtualization. VMware uses a combination of full virtualization and hardware assisted virtualization. And in later classes, we'll talk about some of the advantages that offers you as a user of VMware and other products that leverage hardware and full virtualization. So hypervisors, there's basically two types of hypervisors, what's called a type one or bare metal hypervisor and a type two hypervisor, which is considered a hosted hypervisor. Type one hypervisors, examples of type one hypervisors are VMware, vSphere, and Hyper-V. They're called type one hypervisors or bare metal hypervisor, hypervisors because they're installed directly on your hardware. There's no overlying OS that that hypervisor needs to request resources from. So uh, ESXi, Hyper-V Core, Windows with just, if you're just installing the Hyper-V role without the console, are great examples of bare metal hypervisors. Obviously, there's gonna be a great performance advantage for bare metal hypervisors when you don't have the overhead of another OS on top of that hypervisor. So that brings us to the other type of hypervisor, which is Type 2 hypervisor, or commonly referred to as a hosted hypervisor. Two examples of that are two extremely popular solutions. One is VMware's Workstation, and another one is VirtualBox. Both of those hypervisors require a host operating system in which to run under. An example of VMware Workstation, we can install VMware Workstation in the Windows 7, Windows XP environment, environment, and we can install VirtualBox in basically a Windows XP, Windows 7 environment, and also both operating systems uh, supported also include Linux and in the case of VirtualBox it supports uh, Mac OS 10 and VMware actually has a solution dedicated to um, the Mac OS called uh, VMware Fusion. For a high level marketing overview of comparison of uh, Features for hypervisors, I provided this link to VMware's website. I'm not a big fan of, of vendor specific comparisons because it's more marketing material, but it's a good start on where to look at it, a difference in feature sets. So this was, again, a very quick introduction to virtualization and the different types. Future videos will walk you through actually installing a hypervisor, uh, in the case of our next hypervisor, will be will VMware Workstation, and actually installing a guest operating system in a hypervisor. For more information on virtualization, I provided these links, as well as you can visit my website at www.virtualizedgeek.com.